So we need to respect our parents because if we respect our parents, we will be able to fulfill the plan of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala here on earth. You respect your parents. When does obedience come in? Obedience comes in when they tell you that which Allah has told you to. For example, your mother, your father says, you know what? You better get up for salah. Wallahi, you have to. The reason is Allah told you and your parents are telling you. Similarly, when it's something permissible and your mother, your father is telling you, you should listen to them. You should obey the instruction. Your father says, I want you to go very carefully. I want you to get up at this time and come or go or do this or do that. And it's something permissible. You should listen. That's your father. That's your mother. Subhanallah. However, when it comes to big decisions, very big decisions, remember something very important. That is, you have to discuss with one another. As the child grows older, he develops or she develops a mind of his own, a heart of his or her own, in the sense that they have their own feelings, they have their own dreams, they have their own understandings. Your father and your mother can have had dreams. You can have had dreams for your children. As they grow older, you have to adjust those dreams in accordance with the reality on the ground. You have to adjust them. You cannot, when the child is born, you cannot look at the child and say, Doctor, doctor, what doctor? Subhanallah. So, someone who doesn't know English, they might think, no, not doctor, this is a son. Because the way they pronounce daughter is like doctor also. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us ease. You need to know, you might want your child to be a big alim, a sheikh, whatever. People now have some noble ideas, work towards it, but realize that on the ground, something might happen that is different, they might want to choose otherwise. Don't force your children to do what they don't want to do. Don't. They want to become something, no problem, become that. You're a good Muslim, you fulfill your salah, you're an honest person, you worship Allah alone, you're trying your best to follow the sunnah of the most beloved of all creation, Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Indeed, you are on the right path. Not everyone needs to be the same thing. Not everyone needs to be the same thing. But then there comes a question of marriage. A lot of children might say, Dad, you help me inshallah. You know, let's, oh mom, Come, I'm ready to get married. You can help me inshallah. And it happens in a lot of homes. I think majority, the bulk of homes, it still happens like this where the children will say, please help us. And then you're introduced to one, two, three, four. Perhaps you meet a few people, many. When you're happy with someone, you say, right, I'm happy here. If they are still not happy with you, you might have to go again. Because it does not mean that when you are happy with someone, they are happy with you. You see, it's common logic. Because you say, I don't like this person or I'm not compatible, suitable with this one, not this one, not this one. Yes, this one is a very good one. And that one will say, I don't think I'm compatible with you. Subhanallah. It happens. It's okay. Don't become depressed. You can say, no problem. We try again. And you go on and on. And you might want to go back to someone whom you thought was not compatible to you. You say, hang on, mom. You know, the third person I met, I really think they were good. No harm in going back. They might say, ah, too late. <laughs> too late. Why am I saying this? Because this is the heart of the home. The family unit must be so beautiful. You must have such a powerful relationship that you can talk, you can joke, you can laugh, you can air your views, you can say what you have to, you can say your fears and nobody's going to bash you because of what you've said. They will guide you, they will teach you. This is what a family unit is all about. And today with the globe becoming a little village because of technology and communications and the advancement in the two, you need to know it's even more important for you and and I to be closer to our children very close you know we say the parents should be the friends of the children well technically yes there should be a friendship but there must be a little line where they know that's my father that's my mother there has to be a little line so it's friendship but on another level mashallah tabarakallah you know you cannot just sit with your dad put your legs up take out the weed from your pocket and start ah, 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 that doesn't happen May Allah forgive us. May Allah never let that happen to us. I'm giving you an example. You know, that's my father. You, they reach to be a bit of concern. A bit of concern. And my beloved parents, when you are 
admonishing your children, you do so in a smart way. You know, we are living in a smart world. You have the smartphone, you have the smart screen. When you admonish your children in a smart way, sometimes without talking, you can confiscate some technological contraption that they may have for a little while. Or you give them something, let them earn the points to use it. When the children are little, you can do that easily. As they grow older, you took one phone, and the girl will say, my dad took my phone, I still got another three under the pillow. <laughs> it happens. I have another three under the pillow. I recall one young man messaging me about a big problem he had in his home. He said, now my father's confiscated my phone. So I said, how are you messaging me now? He says, this phone is not declared. <laughs> not declared, which means it's under, under the mattress, under the cover. It happens. People are sharp. So when they grow older, you might not be able to fool them that way. But when they are young, you can say, look, I have you bought an iPad for you. You play with it. So they play with it. They're excited. They're into it. Mashallah. And the day passes and they cannot even let go. Then you say, now you give it to me. You earn it. When you've spent the day in a specific way, when you've done this work of yours, when, then when it's the time to play, I will give it to you for two hours and here goes. Subhanallah. One of the quick ways is to turn off the Wi-Fi. Turn off the Wi-Fi. Trust me, to do that is a bigger punishment than to slap the child or to really jail the child or to whip the child. For them, it's a tantrum and a half. Unless they have the password from next door, then it's over. <laughs> May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. So these are methods of correcting your children that are smart ways of doing things. What I have said may not apply in your case. There might be a different way. There might be something else. Sometimes you give them a treat. Your son likes this. Your daughter likes that. You give it to them when they have deserved it because they did something. It's a gift of Allah. Allah has given you so much. You don't need to just throw everything towards your children. Let them earn it. Earn it by doing good. You know when you go to work every day from time, 8 to 5, you get the salary at the end of the week or at the end of the month, right? If you did not go to work, they cut your salary in a lot of cases. What did you do? You worked hard. You worked towards, they told you to do something. Say you are in a factory where they are manufacturing or producing something. And you are a person who really does your job very well. You might even get a bonus. You might even get a prize. You might be awarded. You might have something extra because of so much in terms of production. It's an incentive. The same applies. If your children would like something, consider giving it to them when the day went well, when the week went well, when everything was okay, subhanallah. And don't over penalize your children. What that means is the son, he might have... Okay, I give you my own example. My example. When I was a little, one day we had guests in the home. And my grandfather, may Allah give him Jannah, he was there with us. And he was looking at me. He was, he was, he couldn't hear properly, you know. At that age, he was about 86, 87. And uh, he came into the lounge when the meal was already done. And now there was dessert and ice cream. So it was my favorite ice cream. And I was there serving the guests. So I asked the guests, would you like some? They said, no. Would you like some? No. Would you like some? No. You know what we say in my culture? More for me. <laughs> May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us ease. Anyway, I was a little boy. So I took my bowl and I decided to take ice cream. Now, you know when you're young what happens? You take a big scoop and you look at it and you say, mm -mm -mm, this is my favorite. Take another scoop, put it... And my grandfather just watching. I promise you, it wasn't so bad. But I ate it and these people had some tea or something else. When they went, when they went, my grandfather called my mother. And he said, you see this son of yours, you have not taught him manners. I'm sure you people have had this happening, right? You have not taught him manners. She says, what happened? He took all the ice cream himself and the guests he didn't even give them. So my mother's looking at me, whose story should she believe, mine or his? And she decided, you know what? The grandfather has already tackled it because he told me, you, you are so greedy. You have eaten ice cream. You're the big ice cream eater. You have what, what? And he kept on going. Now, you know, at his age, he forgets the next day that he told you, but he remembers what you did. So he starts all over again. <laughs> and wallahi, I promise you, 
He did it for a whole year. <laughs> Every time he sees me, I was the bad boy. Ice cream boy. So much so that up to this day, I feel ashamed when I'm eating ice cream. <laughs> I just look at it, I take a little bit, I say, Jazakallah khair, thank you so much. You know? The point is, you know, a small ice cream thing, you don't for one whole year, may Allah give him Jannah. He did it out of love. Trust me, I have no ill feeling. I love him so much. May Allah give him Jannah. He was a great man. He used to read one Quran every few days. He was such a pious person. But because of his forgetfulness, whatever the reason was, the point I want to raise is you cannot go on and on and on for something that your child did that was already gone and over you don't keep reminding them you know you you did this you did that you are a bad child no we are living in an era where you have to tell the child what good the child did you embrace your child you kiss your child i want to ask those who are older than 60 years old here to answer you the question within yourself maybe even beyond 50 you answer the question inside how many of you have kissed your sons and daughters? Question. I don't want the answer aloud, but I just want you to think about it. If you have good news, you fulfill the sunnah. 